Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to discuss HELP syndrome. This is the last video from my series on hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. HELP syndrome is an acronym that stands for H for hemolysis, EL for elevated liver enzymes and LP for low platelet count. HELP syndrome is a potentially life-threatening condition. Whether HELP syndrome is a complication of preeclampsia or a variant that is it is an entity by itself with features similar to preeclampsia is unknown. In order to understand the management of this dreadful obstetrics complication, it is imperative that you watch my other related videos. Preeclampsia part 1, Preeclampsia part 2 where I have discussed the pathophysiology of the disease, especially how our understanding of the etiopathology has changed in recent times. Preeclampsia part 3 where I outline the management of preeclampsia. In part 4, I have discussed postpartum preeclampsia. And please also watch other individual videos on the drugs essential for the management of the disease that is magnesium sulfate, alpha methyl dopa and labetalol. As far as the prevalence goes, 15 to 20 percent of women with HELP syndrome do not have preeclampsia that is hypertension and or proteinuria. On the other hand, 10 to 20 percent of women with severe preeclampsia will develop HELP syndrome. Although the cause of HELP syndrome is unknown, certain risk factors including maternal age of older than 34 years, multiparity and Caucasian women of European descent have been described. Of course, the most important risk factor is previous history of HELP syndrome. This is seen in 2-20% to 20 of cases. Talking about the pathophysiology of HELP syndrome is like reiterating pathophysiology of preeclampsia which I have discussed at length in my textbook Modern Obstetrics and in the second part of YouTube video on preeclampsia. The link is given below. Hence I will discuss only the relevant points here. The pathophysiology of HELP syndrome is ill-defined. The basic cause is microvascular endothelial activation and cell injury. Microangiopathic hemolysis results from shearing of erythrocytes as they travel through capillaries laden with platelet fibrin deposits. Furthermore, activation of the coagulation cascade causes consumption of platelets due to additions onto damaged and activated endothelium. Hepatic necrosis as a part of multi-organ microvascular injury causes the liver dysfunction which is characteristic of HELP syndrome. Many hypotheses for example, a placental instigated acute inflammatory condition targeting the liver and liver damage secondary to insufficient mitochondrial oxidation of fatty acids have been described to define the pathogenesis of HELP syndrome. But the true pathology remains a mystery. HELP syndrome has life-threatening complications like abruptio placentae, subcapsular hematoma of liver, hepatic rupture, BIC, pulmonary edema, and acute renal failure. Maternal mortality associated with this syndrome is 1 to 10 percent and fetal mortality is 10 to 60 percent. Although many of the signs and symptoms are similar to those of severe preeclampsia, there are certain pointers to the existence of the syndrome. Right upper quadrant pain is seen in 30 to 90 percent of cases, as also epigastric pain. These are due to stretching of the liver capsule and sometimes due to severe complications like subcapsular hematoma or rupture. Other clinical features are severe nausea and vomiting late in pregnancy. Headache is seen in 30 to 68% of these women. 
visual changes are seen in 10 to 20 percent of cases jaundice is uncommon it is seen in only 5 percent of cases however it points more towards the possibility of help syndrome rather than preeclampsia it goes without saying that laboratory investigations are must for diagnosis of the condition the following investigations are done cbc peripheral smear haptoglobin levels which are decreased secondary to hemolysis liver function tests elevated ast alt and ldh and bilirubin may be raised prothrombin time is normal but partial thrombin time may be variable that is normal or high serum amylase and lipase levels are required sometimes to differentiate this condition from acute fatty liver of pregnancy of course they are normal in health syndrome renal function tests bun and serum creatinine levels are elevated coagulation profile fibrinogen levels are low secondary to coagulation defects and d-dimer levels may be increased due to fibrinolysis or dic ct and mri of the liver or abdominal ultrasonography may be done to rule out subcapsular hematoma in the liver especially when there is worsening of liver enzymes this peripheral smear shows schistocytes helmet cells and bur cells secondary to microangiopathic hemolytic anemia which is characteristic of help syndrome here is an abdominal sonography showing subcapsular hematoma this could very well lead to rupture of the liver if not tackled in time to predict the maternal morbidity and mortality associated with this syndrome two classifications are used the mississippi classification divides health syndrome into three classes based on platelet count ast or alt levels and ldh levels as shown in the table here please note that class 1 type has the highest maternal mortality and higher incidence of bleeding that is 13 percent whereas in class 3 because the platelet levels are more or less normal the incidence of bleeding is not increased the more severe the class the longer the recovery time postpartum the tennessee classification describes help syndrome as either complete or partial complete health syndrome is defined as hemolysis with an abnormal peripheral smear finding and an ldh level greater than 600 international units per liter or bilirubin level greater than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter patients with complete health syndrome have platelet counts less than 100000 per microliter and ast levels over 70 international units per liter partial health syndrome describes severe preeclampsia plus some features of health syndrome for example lp where there is only thrombocytopenia hel syndrome where there is hemolysis elevated liver enzymes but no thrombocytopenia and ELLP syndrome that is elevated liver enzymes levels and low platelets but there is no hemolysis an important aspect of medical management of the condition is multidisciplinary approach consult a hematologist nephrologist and at times a general surgeon for complications like subcapsular hematoma or hepatic rupture patient has to be managed in a tertiary care hospital first stabilize the condition iv access self retaining catheter and fetal heart rate assessment are important seizure prophylaxis and antihypertensives are given for eclampsia see my youtube video for the same for further details platelets fresh frozen plasma or packed red cells may be needed to combat coagulopathy or acute bleeding intravenous administration of 5 to 25 percent albumin to increase plasma volume has been advocated by some 
Remember, we don't know the exact etiology as yet. It reminds me of a quote in medicine. When doctors don't have a clue, they give steroids to you. And it works in many cases. So also in health syndrome. Specific treatment of health syndrome is dexamethasone to protect liver and elevate platelet count. It also helps in improving fetal lung maturity. The recommended dose is 10 mg intravenously 12 hourly. Steroids should be continued postpartum also. Once stabilized, the patient should be transferred to a labor and delivery ward. The question is when to deliver. Unstable patient can be delivered immediately irrespective of fetal status to save mother's life. If the gestational age is greater than 34 weeks and patient is stabilized, betamethasone is given for 48 hours to improve fetal lung maturity and then the patient is delivered. If gestational age is less than 34 weeks but the patient is stable, betamethasone can be given for 48 hours to improve fetal lung maturity and then evaluate for delivery. Prolong pregnancy as long as you can to increase the chances of fetal survival without jeopardizing maternal life. The mode of delivery can be vaginal or cesarean depending on the situation as I have mentioned in the eclampsia management video. If cesarean delivery is planned, which is more often, notify anesthesiologists regarding low platelet count as it affects their decision making. Neonate may require NICU care. Special anesthesiology considerations are as follows. Local anesthesia can be used for vaginal delivery, but pudendal block is contraindicated. Epidural anesthesia should be used with caution. Many anesthesiologists are reluctant to put in an epidural catheter if platelet count is less than 75,000 per microliter. Special considerations in caesarean delivery are if platelet count is less than 75,000 per microliter, give general anesthesia. If platelet count is less than 40,000 per microliter, give preoperative platelet transfusions of 6 to 10 units. Meticulous repair of uterine incision is important. Leave the uterocycle fold of peritoneum open to prevent a hematoma formation. Before closing the abdomen, Inspect the liver for subcapsular hematoma or hepatic rupture. Keep a subfacial drain for 24 to 48 hours because hematoma formation at the wound site can occur in 20% of cases. Secondary closure of the skin may be required. Post-operative infusions may be needed. Close surveillance of these patients in the postpartum period is important. As I have said, for management of eclampsia, the patient is not out of the woods after delivery. She can worsen after the baby and placenta are out. Remember, 30% of HELP syndrome occur after delivery. The thing to keep in mind is that most patients will experience a period of clinical and laboratory deterioration followed by gradual recovery. The average recovery time for most laboratory parameters is 3 to 5 days, but for platelets it may be as long as 11 days. Hence, the patient should be managed in an ICU until there is improvement in platelet count, urine output, blood pressure and liver enzymes. Continue glucocorticoids after delivery. After recovery, steroids should be slowly tapered off. Refractory patients with delayed recovery represent a clinical dilemma. Exchange plasma phoresis with fresh frozen plasma has been advocated by some for this situation. I would like to end by saying that like eclampsia, women with HELP syndrome are also at an increased risk of developing hypertension and cardiovascular disease later on in life. Lastly, an appeal to students attending this masterclass. Please read my textbooks 
modern gynecology modern obstetrics whose new fourth edition has just been released and the ever popular practical obstetrics and gynecology i have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students these are clinical cases in obstetrics 1000 plus questions and answers and clinical cases in gynecology 1000 plus questions and answers these are also available on amazon.in you can also follow me on other social media platforms like facebook and instagram the links are given here if you enjoyed this video hit the like button share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you for watching